In England, local authorities are responsible for identifying and meeting adults care needs. They are also responsible for contributing towards the costs of any adult social care. Once what's known as your eligible care needs have been established in a care needs assessment, a financial assessment, which is also known as the means test is carried out. This assessment will establish if you should contribute towards the cost of your care and whether the local authority will pay for all or some of your care costs. The first thing to be aware of is that if your income and capital are above a certain amount, you will have to pay for some or all of your own care. Remember that the local authority cannot pay for nursing care, which is the responsibility of the NHS. In fact, any kind of healthcare need is the responsibility of the NHS. If you're not sure about the difference between health and social care, take a look at my video on that topic. Only when an eligible need has been assessed can a financial assessment be undertaken to decide who pays the care bills. The rules about how much you will have to pay vary depending on whether you're in residential care or receiving domiciliary care, which is care at home. Remember that in September 2021, just a few weeks ago, the government announced changes to the funding thresholds that I'm about to share with you. So look out for an update on the rules when all of the detail is known. As things stand today, when it comes to residential care, when the value of your savings and capital assets come to more than 23,250 pounds, you will have to meet the full cost of your own care and are considered a self-funder. When the value of your savings and capital assets are between £14,250 and £23,250, you will be expected to contribute towards the cost of your own care. Your income will also be assessed at this point and for every £250 of savings and capital you have above the £14,250 limit, you will be regarded as having £1 per week of additional notional income. Once your eligible income and this notional income is combined, the local authority will be able to work out how much you should contribute towards the cost of your care. When the value of your savings and capital assets are below £14,250, you will not be expected to contribute from those assets, but your eligible income will still be assessed to see whether you can afford to pay a contribution towards your care costs from your ongoing income. So once all eligible and notional income is taken into account in the means test, you must be left with an income of £24.90 per week for the current tax year. This is known as a personal expenses allowance and it is intended to allow residents to have some money for their own personal use and it's up to them how they spend it. So that's the current rules for contributing towards residential care costs. If you're being cared for in your own home, the rules are much the same with just a couple of important differences you should be aware of. Firstly, because you are continuing to live in your own home, the value of your home is not included when working out the total of your savings and capital. Secondly, after applying the charging rules, you must also be left with a guaranteed minimum income. The amount of this varies depending on individual circumstances, but for a single adult who's reached pension credit age, the figure for this tax year is currently £189 per week and £144.30 for someone who is part of a couple. Individual local authorities have the discretion to set a higher minimum income guarantee in their region or to award a higher amount to someone due to their specific circumstances. But the minimum income guarantee they award must never be less than the statutory amount that I mentioned before. So let's turn to what happens during a financial assessment and what's included. A financial assessment officer from the local authority will assess your income, pensions, benefits, including your tenants allowance, savings, investments, property, including anything overseas, business assets, personal possessions, or any life insurance policies are excluded. But benefits that you are entitled to will typically be included, regardless of whether you've actually claimed or received them. This makes it really important to understand what benefits you are entitled to and to make sure you have applied for them before having a financial assessment. As I mentioned already, if you need care to enable you to stay in your own home, the means test won't include the value of your 
a main or sole residential property. If on the other hand you are moving permanently into a care home, the means test will usually include the value of your property. There are a few occasions where your home is not included, for example a property that you own jointly is disregarded from the financial assessment for as long as your partner remains living in it after you've moved into residential care. The local authority cannot include capital or income that belongs to your partner in their financial assessment. So joint savings will usually be halved. And it's good to know that if you're moving into a care home permanently and you have a personal or private pension, an occupational pension or a retirement annuity, you can choose to pass 50% of any of these to your partner remaining at home. This amount must then be excluded or disregarded from the local authority financial assessment. There are legitimate ways of reducing the value of your assets, but we often hear the term deliberate deprivation when it comes to funding care. And this is where money, assets, income or property have been given away before the financial assessment to avoid having to fund care. In these cases, the deprivation of assets rules may apply. If the local authority decides that you've given away assets with the deliberate intention of avoiding paying care or accommodation costs or to increase your entitlement to benefits, they are allowed to include the value of these assets as what's called notional income or capital in the assessment. In other words, they treat money, assets, income or property as if it, they had not been given away. And there is no time limit on how far back the council can go to look at your financial affairs to see if deprivation of assets has taken place. Now, not everyone has to undergo a full financial assessment. There's something called a light touch financial assessment, which is where a local authority chooses to treat you as if a financial assessment had already been carried out. They will only do this if the evidence you provided shows that you can afford any care costs and will always be able to afford them. This might happen where you have significant financial resources and you do not wish to undergo a full financial assessment for personal reasons. The second thing is there's only a small charge for a particular care service and carrying out a financial assessment would be disproportionate. If you are already receiving certain benefits and it's clear that you would not be able to contribute to the cost of your care anyway. Once the local authority has established your care needs and completed the financial assessment, they'll write to you with the results and you will be allocated a personal budget. This is the amount of money the local authority allocates for your care. You can then tell the local authority how you would like it spent or the local authority gives you the money so that they can pay directly for your own care. You can also choose for the money to go to a separate organization that will spend the money on your care if you wish. The local authority will usually reassess your finances once a year to see if anything needs to change. If you're not happy with the process followed or the outcome, then you can request a review of the decision. If you're still not satisfied with the local authority response, the handling or the outcome of the complaint, you can take it up with the local government and social care ombudsman. Gosh, that was a lot. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. I'm Justin King. My aim is to help people live successful lives and that often involves understanding your money. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button to help more people like you find my channel. Check out the show notes for some useful links on the things I've discussed and for links to other videos on finding and funding care in later life. For now, I'm Justin King, helping you live your best life.